when Ajahn Lee talks about mindfulness practice, he emphasizes the three qualities that we bring to the practice. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency. Mindfulness is keeping something in mind. Alertness is watching what's actually going on, both with the breath, say, if that's your object, and with the mind, making sure they stay connected. Ardency is the quality of doing it right. Trying to be skillful, noticing when things are not going well, how you can improve them. When they are going well, how you can maintain them and develop them further. Of the three qualities, you notice that it's not just dealing with the present moment. Mindfulness is helping you remember what you've learned from the past. Alertness is focused mainly on the present. Ardency is focused on what you're doing to shape both the present and the future, knowing that your actions are going to have consequences. This is why of the three qualities he points out ardency as being the one that gives rise to discernment. Fits in with that question the Buddha said lies at the basis of discernment. What, when I do it, will lead to my long-term suffering? What, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and benefit? It's in the knowledge that what you do is having the impact on your experience and how you can change it to improve that. This is very different from what you read in a lot of other discussions of mindfulness. They talk about the three qualities. Instead of alertness, they call it clear comprehension, sampajanya, and they'll identify that as the wisdom faculty. And at the first glance, it may seem like just shuffling the words around a little bit, but it is, has a very different meaning. For them, clear comprehension is knowing how to label things as stressful and constant, not self. In other words, having a vocabulary to classify things and just sitting there watching them arise and pass away and then noticing them. Okay, this is what's arising, this is what's passing away, and labeling them. That's a very passive approach, and it's ignoring the fact that you are actually doing something to shape your experience. Because the discernment, the wisdom, lies in knowing that your actions are what make a difference. Your actions are the things that are shaping things. When the Buddha talks about dependent core arising, you can get in a lot, involved in a lot of very technical discussions about what he has to say. But there's one point that's always worth bearing in mind, is that a lot of the factors come prior to sensory contact. You're counting the mind as one of the senses. So you want to look at what you're doing to shape things, even before they happen. And having that perspective is that you've got to take responsibility and you've got to look at your actions. That's where discernment comes from. Similarly, in John Lee's discussions of getting the mind into right concentration, he has a lot to say about the factors of the first jhana. Distracted thought, evaluation, singleness of preoccupation, pleasure and rapture. And he divides those factors into two, cause and effect. The directed thought, evaluation, singleness of preoccupation, those are the causal factors. Those are the things you do. The pleasure and the rapture are things that come about as a result. And of all those factors, the wisdom or discernment factor is the evaluation. In other words, you look at what you're doing and then you decide whether you're doing it well or not. This fits in with the ardency. This is what makes the ardency skillful ardency, what makes the effort right effort. You've got to develop your powers of evaluation. One, to evaluate cause and effect, and two, to figure out, okay, what's, what's a good effect? And when you've got something good, what do you do to develop it, 
make the most of it. So you focus on the breath and find which way of breathing feels good. Once you've got a good way of breathing that maintains a good sense of fullness, at least one spot in the body, in one of the centers, in the middle of the chest, the base of the throat, the roof of the mouth, the nose. You try to expand that sense of well-being, because you're going to be trying to inhabit your body as a whole. And if the well-being can spread, okay, it's going to be that much easier to maintain the, the solid foundation you want. So in both cases, the ardency and the evaluation build on the knowledge that what you do makes a difference. And you have to depend on yourself, both to do the right thing and to evaluate it. You've got to develop your own powers of evaluation, so you can have a clear sense of what really is satisfactory or not. Take the Buddha as your example. He started out by looking at his actions. What am I doing? He noticed that things were not satisfactory, so he turned around and looked at what he was doing to see what was causing the stress, what was causing the lack of satisfaction. And it wasn't just that he had standards that were too high. He kept his standards high. It was just he realized, okay, the actions I'm doing are causing the results I don't want. I've got to change my actions. And then he found something that seemed satisfactory, and so he stayed with it for a while until his powers of evaluation got more subtle, more refined. And he'd look back again at what he was doing. This is where discernment comes from. This is how he gained awakening. Learn how to look at his actions, look at the results, see what was connected to what, and then decide, okay, is it satisfactory? He came up with the teachings on the what they call the three characteristics, or the three perceptions. Those were tools for evaluation. In other words, if something was seemed pleasant, seemed good, he asked himself, okay, is it constant? If there's any inconstancy in here, it can't really be the long-term welfare and happiness you're looking for. There's going to be stress there. And if there's stress, is it really worth holding on to as you or yours? Notice he's not saying that there is no you. He's just saying, is this worth it? These are standards for evaluation. Are the results of your actions good enough? If not, turn around and look at your actions. You'll notice that what we're doing here as we get the mind concentrated is we're pushing against those three characteristics, trying to find something that it is constant of ease and well-being, something you have under your control. And you keep pushing and pushing, and you find that you can get the mind quite still, very still, very solid, and a good, strong sense of well-being. That's part of the path, and you want to learn how to master it so you can take advantage of it. Use at that point use those perceptions of inconstant, stressful, not self to deal with anything that's going to pull you away. And they have their power because you know you've got something better. Until you've pushed this as far as it can go. Then you begin to realize that this too has its ups and downs. This too has its inconstancy. That's when you want to look for something still better. And we have the Buddha's example, and that of all the noble disciples, to encourage us in this direction. And something better than this. It's when you've invested a lot in the concentration and learned a lot and gained a lot from it that the insight into in 
constancy, stress, and not self is really going to have power. Some people say, well, why, why bother with all that work? And we just start out from the very beginning labeling things this way. Well, you miss everything that's going on. You miss the fact that you are fabricating things. You are putting things together. An extent to which you are participating, even in something as basic as the fact that you're picking up sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. There's an intentional element there, and you're not going to see it if the mind isn't very, very still. I've told you before with the young man from Singapore who wrote a letter to John Fuang one time, asking for advice in his practice, saying that he was labeling things as everything that he saw and did, impermanent, suffering, not self. He wanted to know if that was the right path. And John Fuang told me to write back and say, well, who is it who's labeling things these ways. Look at that. That's where the problem is. It's not with the things. It's with, the, with what the mind is trying to do with those things, make out of those things. And you're not going to see that unless the mind is very, very still. So always keep in mind that discernment is a factor of reflecting on the principle of action, what you're doing, the results you're doing, and learning how to change what you're doing so you can find something that really is long-term welfare and happiness. Keep coming back to your actions, coming back to your actions. That's where the problem is, and that's in the, the act of coming back and looking at them and looking at the results. That's where the solution lies. Always give that your foremost attention.